Hey, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are going to be doing a first impression of the Club Nebula palette. This is actually a collab between Kaleidos and Aniela Knikvist, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. I've been kind of like sitting on it for the past week and a half. I've had to create eye looks over multiple days because I've just been busy and haven't had time to really film. So we're going to be creating this look as well as two others. If that sounds interesting to you, you guys want to hear my thoughts on this palette, please be sure to stick around. So if this is your very first time watching some of my videos, or maybe you just haven't committed yet and hit that subscribe button, please don't forget to do that before you leave. If you enjoy this or if you want to see more videos like this from me, ring the notification bell while you're at it so you don't miss my future uploads. Let's get into this palette. We're looking a little bit crazy today. It's okay. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> I was so excited to get this in the mail today that I really shouldn't be filming right now. I probably should just be getting ready for bed because it's getting late and I have to work tomorrow. But I want to film with this so bad. This is the Club Nebula palette. It's a collab between Aniela Knikvist and Kaleidos. And this palette is so pretty. Look how pretty. We're going to do different eye looks on each eye just to kind of speed through this. I want to be able to get this video up as quick as possible. I know people are just starting to get this palette in. I haven't done anything with this palette except swirl my fingers in the shimmers because shimmers have my heart and I, I had to. So <laughs> that's all I've done. I kind of touched the green matte in here just because uh, look at that beautiful lime green or whatever you want to call that. Is gorgeous so let's just get to playing we are going to be trying this over top of several different eye bases I think it's important when you're trying out eyeshadow for the first time especially if it's a brand that you're not familiar with or you haven't had as much experience with it's important to try that formula with different eye bases because not all eye bases are equal eyeshadows will perform differently over top of different bases now I've tried Kaleidos before I kind of know what to expect but I still want to show you guys the difference over top of different eye bases so we're going to do some over top of the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base. I also have the P. Louise Base in Rumor 0.5. And then I also have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Base. So I can't remember what I typically put this over top of. I feel like I use P. Louise Base. I'm not 100% sure. So when we're looking into this palette, it's such a beautiful array of like jewel tones. And we've got some of these really beautiful like lighter shimmer shades topper shades to really transform any look that you put down so I really like that there's a nice variety of both when it comes to using the P. Louise base I feel like the best method of application is kind of packing shadows on and then blending out but you can blend first I'm not really sure what I want to do today or think I want to play with the greens first just because I'm a sucker for a good green I'm going to be dipping into the shade Queen of Blades which is this really beautiful, I'm not even really sure what what kind of green that is. It has some real depth to it. And I think I want to pack that right deep into my crease and on this outer corner here. And then I'll figure out from there where I want to go. Okay, I'm going to start with a small brush, a small pencil brush from Morphe. This is the E18. Ooh. So far, super pigmented, packing really nicely over top of that P. Louise base. And yeah, we'll see how this next color packs on. Okay, now I'm going to go around the outside edges of that with this really bright green called Gravity. So pretty. It's almost like a chartreuse color. I don't know about chartreuse. Maybe like a lime green. It's beautiful. That was one of the first shades that really popped out to me when I opened up this palette. Okay, now I'm going to use that P. Louise base to carve out that half cut crease shape. And then I'm going to go over top of it with that green shade Gravity. And then we're going to put a sparkly shade over top. So far, so good. They're blending really nicely into each other. I've had no issues. Okay, now that I have all that, I'm so excited. This is uh, this is going well. 
in my opinion. All right, now what I wanna do is take that really beautiful shade Firefly right here, which is just a really gorgeous like green topper shade. And guess what? We're gonna put it right over top of that green, that shade Gravity. I think the best way to do this is probably with your finger, but I'm kind of wondering if I should put it over top of like a glitter glue. I don't think I'm gonna need to. All right, I'm just gonna start packing it on. We'll see what, what happens here. Oh man, that's pretty. I don't even know if you guys can catch the full effect, like the full shiftiness. That is gorgeous. So I'm half tempted to do this on both eyes just so I can like put lashes and then do the under eye because I think I really like it. Wow. You cannot see on camera the full like shiftiness of it. Oh my God, that is so pretty. Wow, I'm impressed already and this is like look number one. Okay, so for the next eye look, I'm gonna use a different primer and we're gonna try a different technique as well. We're gonna try blending before and not necessarily like packing on color. Let's use the Clean Canvas Eye Base from Gerard Cosmetics. So for this look, I'm gonna use the purples. I'm kind of like stuck on what I wanna do here. I think I wanna go into the shade Naru. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, I'm really sorry, but it's this one right here. It's more of like a, I don't even think that's a purple. That's more like a, well, kind of like a dusty purple or a, or a gray purple. I'm so great at describing colors. Okay, I'm gonna dip in with a fluffy blending brush. Whoa, a little bit of kick up in the pan. That really doesn't bother me too much as long as I don't get a whole bunch of fallout when I have my face makeup done. But thankfully I don't have it done, so it doesn't matter. It's just laying down so easy. This nice little wash of color. I hope that hasn't been too bright. It's really hard to tell when you're filming if what your, if your lights are looking too bright or not. Cause then I'll watch my footage back and I'm like, oh my God, it's so overexposed. I feel like I can't tell if it's like building up or not. It doesn't seem like it's building up any further, which is weird. It might just be the shade that this is. Okay, let's go into the next color. Let me just show you what I mean when I say there's a lot of kick up. Okay. And I'm not like stabbing in there real hard. I'm barely touching my brush in there. You just gotta be a little careful is all I'm saying. So now I'm gonna take the shade Rock Copper and that's that really beautiful cool toned purple here. And we're gonna build that up in the crease a little bit more. I don't know that this Gerard Clean Canvas Eye Base is the best eye base for this type of formula. I feel like it's not really sticking that well to, well, I feel like the eyeshadow is not sticking very well to that formula because it is a little bit patchy, which like I said earlier, you know, different eyeshadows apply differently over different bases. That's just how it goes. And that's with every eyeshadow. So it's not gonna apply fantastic over every single base because they're all kind of formulated differently and for different reasons. But this just isn't blending the way I would like it to. Or maybe it's these colors, I don't know. I don't know if you can see what I mean by patchiness. Yeah, you can kind of see it, how it's kind of lifting right through here. It's like I can't get it to build. As soon as I start blending, it just blends itself away. Mm. So I would maybe not recommend the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base for this type of eyeshadow. I think it does better on top of something tacky and this base is pretty much dry. Well, now it is. I'm gonna try to pack it on this outside corner here. Now that's nice. That turned out really nice. I think it's just using that fluffy brush was not really giving me what I was looking for. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's try another pencil brush. Okay, so the pencil brush isn't bad. The pencil brush is actually laying down the color very nicely. It's using a really fluffy blending brush that's not giving me the kind of pigment and payoff that I'm looking for. It's kind of fluffing that pigment away and blending them into each other and not in a good way. So I would say if you're gonna use the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base or base similar to that, use a very densely packed brush, like a pencil brush, 
Um, even like my, where is it at? My packer brush like this, the flat one, that was really nice. But a fluffy blending brush, not so much. The only thing that this stinks with is that I need to blend out those edges now and that's gonna be a little difficult because I'm afraid it's gonna blend everything away. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, I feel like it's just making it patchy. See how it looks a little patchy up through here now? Well then, and I can't blend it because it doesn't want to blend. I'm just blending this with the clean. I wiped this off really good, and so I'm just blending the edges with this. I just think going forward, I just won't use this eye base because it's a real pain in the ass. For this specific eyeshadow palette, that eye base works really well for other eyeshadows. Okay, I think that's probably about as good as, good as we're going to get it. I do want to move on to this other purple. This one is... Cylon? I almost said Cyclone. I'm going to, again, take that pencil brush. Actually, this one's from BK Beauty. This is their 207 brush. This is really good for packing that color on in that crease area. Really laying down pigment if you want that really pigmented look. Good brush for that. Should I use this color? I feel like I should. I, we need to know how it works. I'm just going to start packing it on the outer edge here. Ooh. Mmm, that's more like an eggplant purple, I think. But I like it. It's really changing the tone of this. I'm not mad about it, though. I don't know what's happening out in that corner, and I don't like it. Mmm, it's like a rough. I mean, to go from something like this to something like this is a little disheartening. I'm half tempted to scrap this one. Holy cow. Okay, let's just stop right there. We need something outrageous enough to take the focus away from the mess that is the crease area and my transition area. Holy cow. I don't know if we have anything uh, show-stopping enough to do that. I mean, that's pretty... Let's use that. That one is called You're My Only Hope. <laughs> what are the odds? They must have known. <laughs> You're my only hope. Please save me. <laughs> Too funny. I promise I didn't plan that. Ooh, that's pretty. I mean, it doesn't look as bad once you get something else going on. But I feel like this one was a struggle, for real. You know what? I do have a really beautiful holographic shadow that I would love to see how it looks on my lid. And since this eyeshadow look is pretty much a lost cause, I'm going to give it a try. Let's just find out. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, like, the full effect on the eyeball. I don't think you can. But I got some holographic shadows from the Pastel Rose UK. And, like, I can see the holographic effect in person, but I feel like on camera it's not translating. But that's what I threw all over the outside here. And then I took that shade, Cure My Only Hope, which was that shimmer shade that I used a little bit ago, right here. And I just kind of tapped back over that inner portion of my lid with it. I just wanted to try something to save this look because I feel like it's muddy and it just does not look great. Okay, I'm going to hop off camera. I'm going to put some mascara, eyebrows, maybe put a little bit of like foundation, something to make it look like I'm not a crazy person with no eyebrows. I might do a little bit of like concealer and lower lash line work just to give you an idea of what the eyes look like. Okay, so to finish off the looks on both eyes, I just used the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Mascara. I used several different eyeliners. So for the green side, I used the LA Girl Magic Mint Eyeliner. This is their Pastel Dream Collection. On this side, I use the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliner in Cry Baby. I use this one all the time with purple looks. I love the way it complements a purple look. So for the lips, I use the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Curvy, and then I filled in with the Lunar Beauty Lip Gloss in Starlight. What else? Oh, I took the Marc Jacobs Accomplice Concealer and used it as a foundation. Oh, and I did the brows, obviously. I just wanted to get back on here after having the eyes totally done 
The only other things that I did was smoked out the same colors up here underneath. And obviously the mascara, the liner, it just kind of pulls the entire eye look together. And then I put inner corner highlights. So for the inner corner highlight here, it's just that shimmer shade that I put over top of the, the first third of my eye. And I think it looks beautiful. I love that. And then on this side, I took the shade Nova, which is this really beautiful, like shimmery, iridescent. It's a white in the pan, but it shifts purple. I really enjoy both eye looks. Like now that they're all completed, this one was a struggle. You saw that. It's a little patchy, um, but I think it's the base that I had it over top of. So, so far I'm midpoint in this video. I would tell you maybe don't use the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base. It's not necessarily the, the right base for this type of shadow. So when you see me again, I will be bare faced again and we'll jump into the next couple looks. Okay, we're back for another day, round two of the Club Nebula palette. I originally was going to do five looks with this palette, but just with life being crazy, not having enough time to film, I'm going to keep it to three looks. So you guys have already seen the first two looks. I did one with the green and like the, I guess, well, I guess it was all kind of green. And then I also did one with the purple shades, but this look I'm going to do on both eyes and I want to use, I don't know, some of these tones down here with like the red, the peachy shade, maybe these two here. I'm not really sure what I want to do yet, but that's going to be the final look. And then we'll wrap up my thoughts on the palette. All right, so for this look, I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer laid down. I haven't tried this yet with this palette, so I don't know how it's going to play with these shadows. Okay, I'm going to start this one off by blending the shade Samus into the crease right here. That's this really beautiful, like, peachy shade. We'll go from there. I'll probably do that and build up Red Giant in the crease. I actually washed my brushes for a change. Actually, my daughter helped me wash my brushes. They were looking pretty gross. Thank you, daughter. <laughs> All right, let's see how this blends over the ABH primer. I got a weird feeling it's not going to stick as good. It's just very light. It's not very pigmented when you put it over top of a, a primer that's like dried down or not tacky. I guess those are the same things. So just so far, the way it's applying, it's not awful, but I kind of prefer the tacky base with this formula, like P. Louise. I was originally going to do MAC Pro Paint Pot over top of this as well, but I just ran out of time to film extra looks, so this is what we got. It doesn't look bad, don't get me wrong, it blends really nicely. And actually, I think that if you are somebody that isn't really comfortable with really heavy pigment and you want something that's more diffused and blown out, then your best bet would to be to go with a primer that's kind of dry as opposed to, to a tacky primer. All right, now that I have that initial color laid down, I want to dip into Red Giant, which is this really beautiful, very deep red color. A little nervous on how this is going to blend, but I'm going to put that in the crease and blend it up into that orange. I do want to keep it a little bit light, so I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to be careful, but I'm, I'm not really good at keeping things uh, light. They end up being very dramatic. These shadows are just very, very pigmented. I'm also hoping I don't get a bunch of fallout since my makeup's already done. So far, so good. It is blending out a little bit into like a dark pink shade just up here. But I mean, if you take a red and you blend it out really well, you're probably going to get pink. So I guess that's to be expected. I'm just trying to decide where to go from here. I'm not getting any patchiness. I'm not getting like any fallout at all, which is really nice considering, again, my face is done. So yeah, digging it over top of the ABH primer. I don't know what it was about the Gerard Cosmetics primer that this didn't like. Or maybe it was the purple shadows, because I haven't tried the purple again over top of anything else. I'm losing a lot of that orange. I don't know if it's because my lights are so bright. I'm going to take the shade Samus, which was that really beautiful, like, creamsicle shade. And I'm just going to do that. We are going to put a shimmer over top, so... 
It's really going to change the way this looks. That's the good thing about the shimmers in this palette. They can transform any other shade in the palette or, you know, any other palette you might have. I'm going to take the shade Nebula, which is this really gorgeous shimmery like orange, but I think it shifts pink a little bit. It's this one right here. Let's put that over top. I just went ahead and drug it all the way over because I didn't know what else to do with it. And I don't hate it. Right now I'm just going back over top of that red on that outer corner, Red Giant, just to kind of deepen her up a little bit, give a little bit more depth. It's a really pretty look. I'm not mad at it. I really like that. Like a whole lot. Wow. I don't know if you guys are catching the full effect on camera, but in person it's really beautiful. I'm going to hop off camera. I'm going to repeat this on the other eye, put on some lashes, smoke out that lower lash line with some of the same colors I just used, and then we'll go over my thoughts on this palette. Okay, so this is the finished look. After I added that lower lash line work, I put, again, the same mattes up top underneath. Then I took the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner. This one's in the shade, oh, Extra Frosting. That's hard to read on there. Um, that's what's in the waterline. I used the Tarte Man Eater Mascara for my mascara. For the lips, I used the ColourPop Lippy Pencil. This one's in the shade Another Round. Just a really decent nude shade for my skin tone. And then I used the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. This one is in Fussy. And this is the finished look using the Club Nebula palette um, from Kaleidos. So I'm going to go ahead and recap my thoughts and feelings on this really quickly for you guys. I think if you've watched me create these three eye looks, then you probably know how I feel. I think this is a really stunning palette. Um, I like the fact that it's got a, a bunch of darker tones in here that you can kind of play up with these shimmer shades. I think that that was a really smart choice um, on Angie's behalf. And the Kaleidos formula is really, really nice. This is a very pigmented eyeshadow formula, very pigmented. So I don't know if you're like a beginner or if you're not somebody that likes really heavily pigmented eyeshadows, you might not care for these so much. If you're somebody that's experienced, if you like heavy pigment or you just, that's your jam, whatever, then this is for you because these are very pigmented. The colors are beautiful. There's amazing payoff. They don't get patchy. They blend beautifully. And again, when you put the shimmers over top, it just totally transforms the eye look. So I'll just, scoochy scoochy like Angie would say and let you see here this is a very soft look very pretty just kind of like flirty I love it I love this eye look and I'm so glad that I grabbed this palette I knew that I was gonna like it Angie's got great taste this is definitely her in a palette and I'm excited to own it so do you need the Club Nebula I guess you have to ask yourself a couple of questions do you like shimmery eyeshadows do you like deep, sultry mattes? Um, are you willing to play around a little bit? Do you like blending different colors into each other? I mean, you can get really creative with this. I am not that creative when it comes to color combos. I mean, I probably picked the easiest color combos throughout this entire try-on process, but that's what works for me. And that's another thing I like about this palette is you can keep it simple and do stuff like I did, or you can really play it up with different color combos. If you mix like the red and the blue or the red and the green, I didn't try that. I just, my eye doesn't automatically go there when I'm thinking about eye looks. I look for what's easy, what is like cohesive with each other. I'm not that daring and crazy with my looks. So regardless, this is beautiful. I love it. And I'm very excited for Angie. I'm happy for her. I feel like this was a very successful launch. And if it's something that you've been wanting to get your hands on, I don't think that you'll be disappointed. So if you would like to see more looks from me, let me know down below. I don't know that I'm going to do like another dedicated video to this just because my time is extremely limited right now. If you guys do want to see more looks with this, I might maybe like include it in a get ready with me type of video where I'm chatting and using this at the same time. Let me know down below what you guys are interested in and I will try to make that happen for you. So if you like this kind of video from me or you just maybe you like the looks that I created, please let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. Not only does that tell me that you like this, but it also lets YouTube know that you like it. And when you guys do that, it'll push this video out there for more people to find, which means more people come over to this channel. And I'm so grateful when you guys take the time to do that. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, but you're enjoying my content, you like reviews, get ready with me's weird shit. 
please hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss my future uploads, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.